Hello there World of Tankers, I'm Drudels Blitz, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about map positioning. Now I've been really trying to push off this video for such a long time, but yesterday I put this option in a poll and I think about 50% of you wanted to see this, which is a huge amount out of like a thousand votes that the poll had. Now, the reason that I really didn't want to make this video is because map positioning is one of the toughest subjects to possibly go over. Because I could just make a simple video and saying these are the spots I like to go to, judging on what lineup the enemy team has. But the issue with that is once you've pushed in that spot, you have to remember that the enemy team might not push there first of all, so you have to react to that and push somewhere else, or accordingly think uh, somewhere else where your tank will be effective, and that's the area where map positioning becomes very, very hard. Because every game I play, I have a set of areas I like to push my tanks, but usually the enemy team won't always agree with those set rules that I have in my mind, so they're going to push their tank somewhere else where you never think anybody would push a tank like that. I was playing a game that I just lost on mines, and I had two Sheridans just sitting behind the ridge on mines, and they were just shooting missiles over the ridge right into my tank, and I'm like, how am I supposed to counter that? I'm a frontline heavy, and I can't counter the Sheridans at all. I'm not going to push over because they got tank destroyers in the back. So map positioning there, I'm like, well, what do I do? It's very hard to think of a scenario like that. So there's a lot of areas where map positioning is one of the hardest things to do in Blitz. So what I decided to do is just like my how-to series on the heavies and everything like that, I'm going to be doing my first game live. That way I get to show you a reactive situation where if things go well for me, of course they go well. If they don't go well, I'm going to show you how I'm going to react to that situation where I'm going to push the tank, everything like that. Now, of course, the scenario would change if I'm running a medium tank. It would change if I'm running a tank destroyer. So I'm going to pull up Strat Sketch after I do show you what I'm doing in my heavy tank here, the 111.5A. But hopefully you guys are going to learn a couple tips and tricks on how to push uh, your tanks on a certain map. Now this video might be a bit longer, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, just because it's going to be such a tricky one to get out there, but hopefully I'm going to be able to show you guys all the scenarios where I push my tanks. I can't really help you a crazy amount though, which I do apologize on the part of what happens after you push there, because as I said, you just can't predict what enemy teams are going to do anymore. If you could, obviously, then everybody would be, you know, it would be more based on skill, but the issue is nowadays you'll see this line up here. You see a Bat Chat E50M, Sheridan 62A, and you think that they're going to push medium. But sometimes the enemy team just decides, you know what, we're all going to push heavy. And the crazy thing is, as stupid as that seems, it works. And here you go. This is an issue. We've got the Sheridan, the Sheridans over here who would love to push the light tank side. You can see there, one pushing the light tank side, which is terrible. And we've got our heavies over here, which have forced me to push the heavy side. Now, if we looked at their lineup, I just said they have literally two heavy tanks, so I'm not even worried about them pushing the heavy side. Obviously, they're going to be pushing their tank the medium side, but my team doesn't agree with that. So what happens is because, and I've said this in many, many videos, because the enemy team has faster tanks than our team, we do have the Sheridan, and we do have, I think, two Sheridans we have, but that's really the only fast tank, so we have a 140. We're not going to outflank their team because they got a Batchat, E50M, Sheridan, Object 268. Their team has faster tanks than ours. Which means what's going to happen is vehicles like my E100, like my VK-72, are just going to be absolutely decimated by the tanks that flank them. So how do you counteract a situation like this? The issue is you can't. You can't just realize, well, I have to counter this because it's such a hard thing to do. Alright, let me see if I can just snap a shell into the lower plate. See that IS-4? That's a basic example of he didn't know what to do here. He's too slow to be able to get into a quick enough position, so now he's going to be absolutely decimated. This is what I sort of mean by map positioning. You can't just declare a spot to run a tank and say, well, it's going to work if you push your tank there, because it's almost impossible to do that. You can see this here. As I said, my E100s are being flanked by the mediums now. This is exactly what I expected was going to happen in this video, and that's why I say map positioning is the hardest subject to cover in Blitz. You just, you can't do it sometimes. So, Hopefully this 4005 is going to just eat up this E5 here. That would be great if he did. Um, I'm going to try and tap him in that track wheel there, but you can see he does hit me back. I think he has 8 degrees of gun depression. I've got 7. So we do have pretty even gun depression, but as I said, team's going to flank behind. So this is a scenario where you really count, can't uh, counteract what the enemy team's going to do. Right now, our team should be pushing through. They have less hit points by a huge amount. It would be an easy push right through the enemy flank if we just rush them. So I'm going to go right after this IS-4 because I know... But I can't. This is the issue. 
Oh no, so this is going to be a loss right off the books. You can see that right now. Um, this is just going to be a basic loss. As I said right at the beginning of the game, there was nothing we could have done about it. Our team just wasn't quick enough. And that was basically what I concurred in this video. So that was basically what I figured out. So unfortunately, this is a loss, but you can see map positioning is really, really hard to cover. Now, in a normal scenario, I would have normally pushed my tank the medium side, but the issue is that the team they have just probably wouldn't have agreed with my opinion on that. So you can see here, this was just not a great game to show map positioning. So what I like to do is if my team falls apart, the main thing I know is, of course, if my team's dying here, which they are, I know that they were going to lose right off the bat, as I said. If I know my team's going to die, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maximize just trying to get out damage. Because if I know, of course, we're going to lose, what's the point of trying to carry a team? So I tried to get out as much damage as I could. I'm not sure how much damage I got out here. But obviously, this was a complete loss on pretty much all ends. And that's what's so hard about the concept of map positioning in Blitz. So I didn't get out a crazy amount of damage. Did the best I could. I am playing on PC, so I'm not the most accurate. But as you can see in the mini team, what are the tanks that do the most damage? Well, medium, light tank, medium tank, light tank. It's always the fast tanks that get the damage out. Because, of course, they're going to be the ones that flank. They're going to be the ones that can do their job the best. What tanks do the best on our team? Light tank. Medium tank, light tank. Of course, E100 and VK, as I said, they're the slowest. They're going to be flanked. So the idea of map positioning isn't really a concept in Blitz anymore, in my opinion. The idea of map positioning, the way it works, in my own opinion, is it's more knowing where the enemy team's going to go and where your team's going to go. But the issue is that if you have a game like that, you pretty much figured out you're going to lose right off the bat. So map positioning completely falls through the door right there. You have no idea what to do. Of course there, I had no clue where to push my tank. Because if I was going to be flanked from the rear, I'm not just going to turn around and let all those guys kill me. And that's what happens to the 100. So it's such a hard term to cover in this video. So I'm going to bring up strat sketch and show you possible outcomes just basing on if teams go where you want them to. But just this little, little quick example here of live gameplay showed you that you can't always judge where the enemy team's going to go. And that's what happens about 40-30% of the time. So as you can see, I have pulled up Strap Sketch. And I've created the exact lineup the enemy team and my team had on that Faust match. Just to show you what our team could have done and where you could have positioned your tank that would really cause the victory to go in our favor. Or at least a 50-50 chance just depending on skill and really how you know how to play your tank. So as you can see, this is what our team did, first of all. Our team decided, you know what, we're going to push all the way through here, try and flank. But the issue, as I said before, was we had a VK-72 and an E-100. And those tanks are not as fast as any vehicle the enemy team has. Even the IS-4, which is the slowest tank on their team, is still a lot quicker than a VK-72. So obviously, our tanks are easily going to be flanked. And even though I'm in a 1115A and we have a 4005 and some light tanks, we're still not able to keep up with the tanks they have on the enemy team. So that's where we lost. I knew we were easily going to be flanked. Now, of course, if we had the faster tanks, then we might have won. But still, that is not the way you want to play a game. The way you want to play a game is obviously something like this. And this is how I envisioned our team to go when I first saw the lineup. But as soon as our VK started going this way, I realized it was pretty much a loss by then. But... What I envisioned was, of course, our team was going to be pushing to the medium side. The VK and E100 could have held here. We saw their IS-4 tried pushing through a spot like this, so they would have contested the IS-4. And the E5 as well was positioned somewhere around here. So these two tanks would have been contesting the E100 and the VK-72. 268 most likely would have been sitting in a bush like that. And as well, the 4005 easily could have sat in a spot like that. Not only gets shots across here if he pushes out a little bit more or flexes over to here. As well, the 4005 has shots on the medium side. As well, I would have pushed my WZ-1115A either in three spots. I could have pushed it, as you can see in this spot here, contesting vehicles like the Sheridan. I could have pushed it up here against the 62. And as well, I could have pushed it over here to a spot on this spot. I like to go up on the dome. And the reason for that being is, first of all, since I have 7 degrees of gun depression, I can hide my lower plate with the gun depression. I can get shots down on tanks like the E5 and IS-4. Although the issue with that spot is if there's a tank like the 268 camping there, if I push past this halfway point, well, yeah, I'm going to be losing 600 hit points. So there's many, many spots you can see you could have positioned if the enemy team went the right way. And as well, my team went the right way. And of course, the enemy team did do the right thing. It was just my team didn't know what they were doing. But as you can see here, there's many spots you could have positioned your tank. Of course, if you're in the medium, I would have suggested over here. 
There's many spots you could have counteracted if your team had gone the right way, but unfortunately, 20-30% of your teams don't do what you really expect. Now, I also made a heavy push scenario. I didn't name the tanks or anything like that, but of course you can see here, if your team has more heavies, you would want to push your tanks heavy, but unfortunately, the last game you saw, the enemy team just didn't have it. But saying they did, you can see three heavies here, three heavies here. You would want to push your heavy tanks to the heavy side. And the enemy team has three faster tanks, and we have three faster tanks. So this is the sort of scenario where you'd hope that everything works out well. Your heavy tanks push to the heavy tanks. They side scrape here. They do their jobs there. Enemy team does the exact same thing, same spot with their tank destroyers. And the mediums flank over here. This way, it's more based on skill. Now, of course, if these tanks over here still beat these tanks, then, just like, as I said before, the... Lights and the mediums are going to flank behind your team and kill the heavy tanks, but hopefully by then your heavies will have killed the enemy team and pushed through. So that's how you sort of envision map positioning. So it's really, really hard to tell where to go, but hopefully this little strat sketch thing here did help you guys out. Now, of course, if you were in a heavy tank push like this, I would never suggest to go to the bottom area. First of all, because if there's somebody here, they can easily just, usually it's a tank destroyer too that sits there, they can get shots across into your tank and you won't even get spotted, or should I say, they won't be spotted until they've shot you, you're not going to even know they're looking at you, as well, these tanks here could easily get shots to you, so never push into this down position, always stay on the high ground, high ground is always going to give you the advantage, tank destroyer, again, I'd suggest you stay on the high ground, stay a little bit back so you won't get detected, and you might be able to get shots into this whatever heavy tank sitting there, and mediums, it's really tricky where to tell, because you can go on any part here, again, I like sitting right here in the beginning of a game on Faust just to spot anybody because if you're in your medium here and they're pushing across over here, you're going to be able to spot anybody that's over here in your medium just to make sure that there's no heavies coming here, anything like that. I like to push a medium right into that bush there. Then once I know where they're going, then I'll either push down through here, come around them, depending on how many there are. I'll push up here. I want to know where their tank destroyers are. So as many positions as you can see where you can push your tanks and really benefit the team. But the main thing is you have to work together as a team. Team composition is the most important thing. It's not team positioning anymore or yourself where you should position your tank. Of course, you're going to get more damage out if you know where to go. But in a scenario like this one here, I don't know where to push my tank. There's no defined area to push your tank once your E100 and VK are pushing over here. I could have gone to the medium side with the Sheridans and the 140 and tried to contest them. But obviously we would have been completely steamrolled. Our 4005 VK-72 and E100 would have taken too long to get behind us to even help us. We would have died that way. So I figured I have to stick with the team because that way we at least have a small percentage of winning. So when we did that, then I realized I could have gone after the IS-4. I tried to go after the IS-4, but I realized they're flanking us from behind and there really wasn't much that could have been done by then. So it was pretty much an instant loss once I realized what was happening. So I just tried to get out as much damage as possible. So. You can definitely see that that game was easily going to be a loss. Even if you rewind back, you'll notice that it was instantly a loss as soon as I realized the team was going to flank us and beat us. So team positioning is more important than personal positioning, in my opinion. You need to take command, tell the team where to go. Now, I didn't tell the team where to go in that one because I realized our VK-72 didn't have a camo. He probably wasn't a great player, would have ignored me anyways. The E-100 was following him. But then I realized we were screwed. But you need to make sure that your team goes the right way more than anything else in the game. So I hope you guys did learn something from this video. I'm going to try and do other maps as well. But let me know if you want to see other maps. Or you just think that it's so hard to know where an enemy team's going to go that you don't want to see more maps. So let me know in the comments down below. I'll actually have a little poll if you want to see more videos like this on Middleburg, Mines, any other random map I do get stuck into. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I hope you did enjoy this video though, and I'll see you in the next one.